What's up everyone? T today I'm going to be focusing on drag and drop effect in Windows presentation forms in C Sharp. So I'm making this video because I was trying to do drag and drop myself and I was looking all over the internet trying to find like an easy way to do it um, because like there's there's a lot of examples out there but they're just super super complicated. So I finally figured out how to do this in a very simplistic manner, um, under 100 lines of code. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're going to fire up our Visual Studio here, and I'll be doing this from scratch. So it'll be exactly like yours. Uh, so we can do create a new project, and I have it on my recent templates. You could also do it for the search for template, but you want to do a WPF app on the .NET framework. So go ahead and press next. I'm going to name this, um, let's see here, drag underscore drop effect. And uh, yeah, the location looks fine for me. You can put it wherever, of course. So I'm going to do it on the .NET Framework 4.7.2. Um, just about any of these will be fine. So we're just going to go ahead and press create and give that a second to load up and then we can get started on our actual code all right here we go so we got our window here and right off the bat uh, the very first thing that you're going to want to change is the um so okay we have a grid right we want to make this a canvas actually because I don't know, it just works better with the drag and drop effect. Um, I'm honestly not entirely sure why, but yeah, no, I, I just came across that. Like, if you use a canvas, it makes it significantly easier than using a grid. So now that we have the canvas, um, we're going to go ahead and name this canvas. So we're going to name it uh, Canvas Main. How creative. And then height. Um, this is just, you know, the height of... I mean, you could just make it the height and width of the window, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, it's just, you know, declaring the height and width of the canvas, which, in this purpose, will just make it the whole window. And then we also have to declare a couple of events for this canvas. So we have to declare the preview mouse move event, and I'll just let C Sharp handle naming that. Uh, so that'll that'll come into play when we actually are moving our element around our canvas, and then we also of course need the preview mouse up event, and I'll just let C sharp handle the movement of that. So now that we got that, um, that's pretty much all that we need as far as XAML goes. Uh, the rest can be handled in the C sharp. So we'll go ahead and flip over to our C sharp, and what we're going to do is declare an ellipse. So that'll be like the shape that we're going to be dragging and dropping. Um, you can do a lot of different, you know, uh, you could do like a text box or a button or any, any element really. That's what's super handy about this method is you can just use any element. And I'm just going to use an ellipse for, you know, simplicity's sake. Um, so yeah, we just declare the new ellipse, then we're going to do the fill, and we'll make it blue, very pretty color, there we go. Um, then we gotta set, we'll set the width and the height, just, you know, the basics, nothing too difficult here, but it is good practice to set these in your code. Um, now, now the fun part. So what we were going to do is essentially give this ellipse a starting point on our canvas. So we can do that very easily. Uh, this is why, like, where canvas is very helpful is since it's, you know, uh, we're using a canvas, we can use the canvas object and then the dot set top method. And then we can simply say, so our user control, which is the declared ellipse, and we'll set it at 20. So this just means from the top, uh, go 20 pixels down, and that's where the top of our ellipse will start. And then we're also going to set the left. So 
you know, from the far left of our window to the ellipse element, we're going to say it's also 20 pixels. Cool. So now we need to declare an event handler for our ellipse. Um, so this event handler is the preview mouse down. So you might have been wondering when we were doing the uh, the canvas, like why why is there no mouse down? You know, don't you have to click on the element to drag it? And yes, you do. But we're gonna declare that as an uh, an event handler of our ellipse. So our user control element, uh, user interface element will have this event handler, not the top level canvas. And you'll see why and just oh well, I mean obviously like you click on the ellipse. Like if you just click on the canvas, you don't want anything to happen to the ellipse. You only want it to be in control of the user to drag and drop once they've clicked on the item or the element. So that's all good. Um, now we just add this uh, this element to the canvas. So this is really easy too. Uh, you just say, so you reference your canvas, canvas main in my case, and you just say children add this child, uh, which is this ellipse, this ellipse item here. So we got that, cool. So now uh, we also want to do um, some global declarations here. So these are items, or yeah, Items that'll be referenceable throughout the entire this entire um, class. So the entire main window class, which in this case will be the entire project essentially. So we're gonna make a UI element called drag object and just set that equal to null. And then we also need a point, and that's gonna be our offset. So now we're ready to implement our preview mouse down of the uh, user interface element. So to do this, um, it's very easy to just use the this pointer. Uh, if you've ever used the this pointer, it's very popular among the computer science community because of its simplicity. Essentially, this means this. So like this item, this user interface element, um, just use it. Let me reference it. So we can just say this dot drag object equals sender as UI element this dot offset equals E so E in this case is our mouse button event arguments um, so E is very useful as well because now we can get the position of the mouse and say this dot canvas main so essentially it's position on the main canvas we can we can get that and set it equal to our offset. So that kind of handles a little bit of the movement. And then we also have to do this line here. Um, oops, this dot offset dot y. So the y position will minus equal. So subtract from canvas dot get top this dot drag object. And then very similarly, we get to do that to the x coordinate. So x minus equals canvas dot get top. Oh, my bad. Dot get left this dot drag object. And then one final line here, this dot canvas main dot capture mouse so these lines here I mean you could diagnose them a little bit further but essentially these five lines handle all of the movement when you go and click an item and then you're dragging it around so next up we're gonna do the canvas main preview mouse down event so this one's pretty easy. Um, so if this dot drag object, see that's where it comes in handy that this is a global declaration as now we can use it here and we can use it here and it's still essentially referencing the same thing. Um, obviously the value changes, but it's very handy to do the global decora declaration. So then we can say return. Um, that's just saying like if there's nothing, 
no drag object obviously we're, we're something's wrong so we'll return that but uh, then we'll declare variable position equals e so our mouse event args so we can get our mouse position very easily and then sender as UI element so the object that sent it um, it should be a UI element but this is just kind of saying like all right, like since it should be a UI element, we can just say sender as UI element. Um, so now we are ready to. Oh, I'm sorry. It should not have been sender as UI element. It should have been sender as I input element. There we go. So an I input element is establishes the common events and also the event related properties and methods for basic input processing. So um, also it looks like this is only usable in Windows Presentation Foundation, so WPF. Uh, so if you you know had chosen to not do WPF, you would run into an issue right here. So now we can do a little bit more of telling the canvas what's going on essentially so we're going to say this dot drag object so that the object we're dragging the position dot y minus this dot offset dot y uh, so that kind of just sets the top of uh, where this this element will be in relation to the canvas and then we'll do a very similar thing for the set left. Uh, obviously, we're going to be using the x position or the x member variable of our position object. Um, so minus this dot offset dot x. Cool. So now we're ready for our canvas preview mouse up. And we are almost done here. So we say this. So this is obviously when you release the item. Um, so drag object equals no, and this dot canvas main dot release mouse capture. All right, and I believe that is everything. So if we go ahead and press start, fingers crossed here, we should see a window with a blue ellipse, and we do. And then if we click this ellipse and we move it around, we can leave it wherever we want. Therefore, allowing for a drag and drop. And th like I said, this is very simple. That's why I absolutely loved this method. I mean, it was 60 lines, you know, with a lot of space in between. Uh, so very simple, very simple on the XAML too. I actually didn't have to declare any elements from the XAML. You can do it all from the, the C Sharp code. So yeah, this, this method was just super, super handy, and I figured I would share it with everyone, like how to do this, because I think it's super useful, you know, building a user interface and allowing drag and drop just makes it so much easier to understand, like, what you're supposed to do with this interface. So it kind of opens up your ability as a programmer, too, to extend your horizons and kind of open up the user interface for a lot more user control. So with that, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And take care.